Hey there everybody, this is the Gerbil, and in today's video I want to showcase the Light Side Geonosian Territory Battle and or Omicron. And I want to give some tips of an advice on how to run the team efficiently and get through it in not 30 minutes, but as little as 12, if you can call that little. The team that you should probably run will be Radis, Jen, Cassian, K2, and Scarif. I'll explain why in detail in a moment. Now, Watt's tech that you're going to get, yes, Watt, because Cassian becomes Watt, is critical that you apply the weapon tech and the shield tech on the right people. Jen Urza needs the weapon tech for the 15% turn meter gain every turn, and Scarif needs the shield generator not to recover 30% protection, but that because it's a buff, and that buff is going to guarantee he taunts and guarantees that he revives every time he dies. Do I follow my own advice? Not really when playing it, but that's what you should do nonetheless, and that's what I'm trying to teach myself to do. That of course leaves the med pack to go on uh, K2, but it's far less important. Now here we go opening up with dual snipers and dual B2s. I've heard people say that this squad is inherently slow. Not true. Not really true, that is. Radis is rather quick, and so is Jen Urza, among the fastest characters in the game. And Jen Urza's second ability, her Trenchian Strike, not only does it remove 100% turn meter from the target enemy and stun them, it also grants her that much turn meter, which is why you want to put the weapon mod on her so that every enemy turn she gains 15% turn meter so that she can reduce her cooldown of two on the truncheon strike so that she can selectively remove all turn meter from an enemy and gain that much herself. This is essential in outrunning your enemies and controlling board state. She is probably the dominant character in this regard. Yes, Radis is going to net out a lot more damage and his mass assists and the AoE are quite effective, but watch, boom, did you see that? Jen just stunned the sniper droid, removed all of its turn meter, and recovered almost 100% turn meter herself. That enables her to immediately go again and revive someone like we just saw, Cassian aka Watt, who had died. Jin's cooldowns are both quite low, but her AoE's cooldown is a bit higher, and that of course is her revive ability. Now you may be thinking that, that Radis can also revive characters, and while he can, it's not very effective because he can only do it once per event. Not per battle, but for the entire event of all four phases. This means that once you pop his hope, it's done for him. He cannot go again. So Jen Urza is going to be your primary source for revives, and it is critical that you do not use her revive ability unless it is needed, because you just never know when the RNG is going to not go your way and somebody's going to get one-shotted by Droidica or a sniper droid. She, of course, herself cannot die while Radis is still alive, which is another reason you want to put the the shield generator watt tech on Scarif. As long as he has it, he's going to taunt, and he's a tank. As long as he's taunting with that buff, when he dies, he will revive. So you pretty much have an unbreakable protection wall there. Nonetheless, you will find yourself at some point probably facing down a, a select group of enemies who have managed to somehow take out Scarif, killed him again, and killed what? It gets pretty scary at that point, but by the time you get to phase two, Radis should have his ultimate ability, the hope, lined up and ready to go in an emergency sake. And of course, if you have resisted the urge to use Jin's second ability, then you will have that available at the first opportunity. Keep in mind that that ability will only revive one character, I believe, for each critical hit that she lands. So you do want to try to use it as soon as possible and not wait for everybody on the team to die. It actually says deal physical damage to all enemies, grant target ally 100% turn meter, which you will almost always want to pass to Radis. If any critical hits are scored, revive a random ally with 20% health for each critical scored. So you can revive up to four allies, Radis and everyone else, but at that point it's probably game over if it comes down to it. Um, I have gone four and four, all four phases, 
every Light Side Geo battle I've been. I have not actually played Phase 4. I thought I had, but I have not. I've done Phase 3, now a total of four times, and gone 4 and 4 with no problems. I have had one event go a little scary, but eh, not too much of a problem. So anyway, general strategies. Beyond the weapon tags, Jin needs the speed bonus, Scarif needs the tank tech, auto taunting, K2 needs the whatever. You need to keep in mind that Watt Tambor's basic is going to apply buff ability and ability block on the target enemy. It only lasts for one turn, but he is going to take so many turns and he will assist with K2 as we just saw that you can spread out those ability blocks. Now he's not always going to assist, he assists on K2 special, so his second attack, but you can use that both K2 and Watt's own turns to selectively ensure that the enemy team is consistently ability blocked with buff immunity. It is really, really important that you ability block IG100 or whatever his name is and stop him from taunting. This team does not put out a lot of firepower. Their offensive attacks are quite weak. So if you wind up in a situation where you have a droidica and a sniper droid and you are trapped behind an IG taunting, then you are going to be in trouble. So you need to make sure that you use Watt to ability block the tanks as soon as possible. And then you want to use Radis's mass assist on any of the, the droids with the, the B1 or B2s so that you can whittle them down as quickly as possible. Of course, don't make the same mistake I did right there and mass assist when general sitting there because you can only remove so many stacks per a turn, not per hit. It's kind of frustrating. I don't even know how that mechanic works, but whatever, we move on from there. Okay, so you need to make sure that you, like I said, ability block and don't get in this situation right here where Magna Guard is taunting and you are stuck behind him. This is kind of your worst case scenario because like I said, he's really beefy and you can't do much. At this point, you have to rely on your AoEs from Radis and from Scarif and if you feel safe enough from Jin, though I don't recommend it, to try to whittle down the other droids, the B1 and B2s. Of course, you also have another option. If you cannot land the ability block on IG-100, you can try to stun him down with Jen again, using her Truncheon Strike. It is quite effective, but it's better to use that consistently on targets of opportunity with the most turn meter, just so that she keeps taking turns back to back. Truncheon Strike, basic. Truncheon Strike, basic. Truncheon Strike, basic. And you can you can remove so much enemy turn meter, especially compiled with the 15% she's gaining from, from uh, Watt's tech, she will easily outrun everybody. Now, I've modded my Jen Urza for, I don't remember, about 320 speed, which is pretty quick. Here we go, Trunchy Strike, boom! And look at her turn meter. She's she back-to-back -back attacks. Now we're gonna do an AoE, which revived K2. And we are, see, there was Scarif, he died, and he's right back. So as soon as Watt's gonna take a turn, he's gonna put that tech right back on him. Here we go, tank tech, and now Scarif cannot die again. Well, rather he can, but he will again auto revive, and he's gonna keep taunting. Right. So, yeah, pretty much that's it, as far as I can recall right now. Right now. Just trench and strike, remove turn meter, keep the tank tech on Scarif, and then he cannot die. Use Watt and the assists from K2 to call Watt uh, to ensure that you are spreading around ability block and buff immunity. And once you get this down, it's not actually that bad. Um, 12 minutes is kind of slow. I think I've done it in as little as 10, but it's tricky. As far as the win goes, it's actually relatively easy to ensure the win. Uh, I don't, I don't think that any of these ever were were a problem. Now, should you apply this Omicron? I guess is another question. Like that really depends on the state of your roster as a whole. If you're going for profundity, and you do not have many viable light side teams, then sure, why not? It's not a bad option. 
And it, while it's pure speculation, I think that Cassian's Omicron is going to be very, very important in Territory Battles 3. The Cassian, the Andor TV show is quite popular. And if you're not watching it, I think you should go check it out. It is an amazingly good show. My wife, does not like Star Wars in the slightest. She really doesn't like it. And she came in the other day and sat down with me and she's like, wow, this show is really good. And I let her watch about 15 minutes of it before she finally asked, what is it? And I was like, oh, it's uh, Star Wars Andor. And she looked at me and got up and left. But that just went to show some stereotypes affecting her judgment, I guess. But whatever, we're, we're talking about it, hoping she'll like it. But she did, until she found out it was Star Wars. Pretty funny. Anyway, it's a great show. And, uh, of course, we know that Territory Battle 3 is coming probably mid-December. Zareth Prevails says it's going to be, I think he said December 12th is what he's pegging for it. Um, I'm not so sure it's going to come out before the year is over, but CG did say that is their hope. So cool. If we get it, excellent. Uh, but due to the popularity of the Andor show, this really interesting dynamic by being able to go in disguise, which Andor does in the Andor show, spoiler alert, uh, and how territory battle is about the rise of the Empire, which is, of course, Andor's prime moment. Uh, I think that we're definitely going to see um, Andor be very, very effective in Territory Battle 3. Now, he may not be, and that could all be whatever, but I think it's a very worthy investment. Of course, there are other teams that are probably more effective. Um, of course, CLS with Chupio, Chewie, C-3PO, and Han Solo. Uh, it can get through most battles in four to six minutes if you just kind of hammer away. It's a very, very easy team, but it's also a lot more RNG dependent. It is very easy to lose with that team, even in phase one, whereas this, this Radis team, I have not lost yet. I, I am eight and O in battles, right? Phase one, two, three, three, phase one, two, three, three. Um, not sure why I haven't hit phase four. I think I've just, I don't know. I'll have to see the map. Maybe, I don't know, whatever. My guild gets 24 stars. Maybe we haven't been getting to phase four. I don't know. Maybe I've been told not to do it. Uh, but 24 stars isn't bad in LSGOs. I, I'm really looking forward to more. But see, here we are, phase four. Uh, uh, every, every lineup I have encountered, I have ended just like this at almost full banners. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. Utilize that Truncheon Strike. Keep the tank tech on Scarif. Don't use Jin's Revive until you have to. Save your hope until, like, break in case of emergencies, and you will have no problems. Oh, yeah. And strategically use that ability block from Wad. All right. If you did like this video, please give me a like and a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. And I will see you all around on the holotables. Thanks again, and bye-bye.